ओं सदा शिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ओं सहनावत सहन उभुन सह वीरक तेजस्वी नवधी तमस्तुमा विदिषा वह ओं शांति 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 त्रैलोक्यनाथ हरिमीड्य मुदार सत्व शक्तेनूज तनय परमेक जीमूत मुक्त विमलांबर चारुवर्णम वासीष्ठ मुग्र तपस प्रणतस्म So we were looking at how Tottakacharya was handling the objections of the Vaisheshikas. The Vaisheshika and Nayaika, they have a certain theory, we can say, that the Atma, which is Nitya according to them, can have Anitya Guna. That is their proposition. so they give a list of eight gunas sukha dukha di all these things they say are all qualities of atma so atma itself is sagunam according to them even though it is nitya that was started here in the 25th verse you can see kana bhugyam achikluta atma gunam guna pugam anityam anatma gunam so this we have to negate we cannot accept that anaya disha sa nirakriyatam acharya is saying why nityam anitya gunena guni na hi because a nitya vastu cannot have an anitya guna now when we say like this what does the tarkika say they say that no no see even akasha is nitya but akasha has shabda guna shabda guna kam akasham this this is accepted by everybody that sound is a quality of akasha now for this what does the vedantin say the vedantin says that that's not correct akasha is not nitya akasha also is only created space time is not eternal understand that that is why even there is no eternal heaven and all is nonsense because if heaven is a physical place and if it is space time where somebody has to go there it it is also within space time where right? it is created means it cannot be eternal in fact anything eternal has to be there right now It cannot be reached by you at some other time, correct? That also is a problem. Anyway, but still there are <laughs> billions of people who believe in eternal heaven. Okay, so uh, that's how it is. So here, space is not accepted as something which is eternal because there are lot of sutti vakyas which say that space is created. Okay, so Taittiriya Upanishad is very famous. So, tasma de tasma dhatmana ha akasha sambhuta ha like that it is there. So, therefore, finally, what we say is there is no upamana, there is no example you can give me where, or there is no case where you can present me that a nitya vastu can have anitya guna. That is not there. Okay, it is just your own imagination only. Therefore. uh again the another point is taken up by the acharya here which is very important that actually <laughs> takes you towards the mahavakya so now he is analyzing whether there is any connection between the anitya guna and the, and the nitya vastu in fact between the nitya vastu and everything else only is there any connection whether there can be any association and dissociation yoga vyoga yoga means association or joining vyoga means dissociation 
Now, when you look at this, the Acharya concludes that the Nitya Vastu cannot have any association or dissociation also with anything which is Anitya. That is because association and dissociation are, are only possible with objects which are parts, which have parts. Okay. So one part of an object can be associated with the other part of the object like that. Only that which has avayava, avayavitva, like that Acharya is using the word here. That which has avayavitvam means that which has avayavas or parts. That alone can have yoga or viyoga. But atma is atma does not have any avayavitva. Okay? It is niravayava. It is partless whole. The self is a partless whole. In fact, that is how we uh, look at ourselves, understand that in our own appreciation of ourselves, we never feel that we are uh, somebody with parts. Even though we have the body consciousness, even if you lose your finger, let us say, you do not consider that you are only some 95% of yourself or anything like that. Or even if you lose a leg, you are not only 75% of you. You are always the same human being. Even though you have body consciousness, etc., if you just think about it, in your own appreciation of yourself, aham, I is always a partless whole that you can actually very easily appreciate that point. So this partless whole cannot have any association with anything else. That is what now Acharya is pointing out next. Okay, because it is a continuation of what we said before that the Nitya Vastu cannot have any Anitya Guna. But then what about all the Guna etc. which we are perceiving means does it have any connection with Atma means even that is not possible. There is no connection. Then how does it appear means correct that is the right word. It is appearance. It is an appearance like even the Raju Sarpa etc. So, the, the snake on the rope has no connection with the rope in reality. Understand that. There is no connection or anything. That's why we call it adhyasikam. Means it is superimposition only. It is an appearance. Like that, this world of names and forms, including your body, mind, sense complex, is all only an appearance. Okay. So, what appears like this, which are all kalpita. In fact, that is the last verse we saw. So, Nahi kalpita bhaga samagamanam. Samagamanam means basically the same thing. Sayoga only. Something like an association. So that which uh, the, the kalpita bhagas, even though atma doesn't have any bhaga division, right? it is nirvikalpa, it is niravayava. And, uh, but still if you say, no, no, the, the, we have some imagined attributes of atma and it has connection with atma means Whatever you imagine is all vitatha. That's what uh, our Acharya is saying here. So, this it is false. It's only an appearance. So, our understanding is that whatever is appearing, the Kalpita Bhaga, they are all only false appearance. That is very clear to us. Sudridha also he says. So, Parikalpita Vastushu Vitatattva matihi. So whatever you have imagined, <laughs> like a snake on the rope, okay, or uh, silver on shell, all these things, you may say that I saw it or I am seeing it, etc. But even while you are seeing, seeing it, it is false. It has no reality. Therefore, there cannot be any connection between this Kalpita Vastu and the and Atma, which is Vigata Avayava. Now, continuing, we have to now go to the 31st verse here. Iha Veda Shirasuta Dartha Vidaha Pravadanti Samastha Jagat Prakritim Paramatma Padam Drishi Matra Vapuhu Dhruvameka Matonya Anitya Miti so, 
now beautifully acharya is now taking us into the vedantic teaching the upanishad whatever the upanishad reveals to us in fact he has by logically taking us through a certain direction only now he has arrived at the, uh, whatever is being revealed by the shruti of so here he says iha with reference to whatever we are discussing now correct iha means now really but now means basically now is whatever subject matter we are discussing with reference to that what veda shiras shirasu so in the veda shiras means in the, the upanishad is normally called veda anta correct veda anta means the end portion of the veda I mean, because literally it is the last portion of the veda if you take veda as a book the the, the concluding chapters are where the upanishads are located of course some upanishads are there even in the samhita like the ishavasya upanishad but still here acharya is calling them as veda shiras means what it is the head or crown of the veda means what it is in fact that teaching is the ultimate teaching of the veda really that is what veda really wants to teach you everything else also is only to prepare you to receive this teaching so the acharya is using the word veda shiras so in the veda shiras which is upanishad or vedanta what what is said like that tad artha vidaha those who know the meaning of what is really said in the veda shiras mean not only the meaning they know the sampradaya they know the methodology to teach it they have known again how did they know that means they knew it from their own guru that is very important only if you have studied from a guru yourself and understood the subject matter you can be a teacher yourself understand that most of the people who are apne aap also there are many people are there correct they just claim that i am a guru i had some vision etc but those people even though they may be mystics and all that they can have quotable quotes and all that also i don't deny that but it is very difficult for them to teach in a uh, in a proper manner in the sense that in fact they may even derail the study of the shastra itself that is the sad thing and you will be going in a uh, in a wild goose chase of an experience because the mystic may have had some experience which he is interpreting he or she is interpreting in a particular manner and they may it may have transformed them also an experience can transform you i don't deny that but then uh, those who are following them have they have no way of replicating it or anything correct right? they are just waiting for that to happen to them and all that that is sad in fact i have seen many people like that they have spent 30 years 40 years of their life waiting for something nothing happens really so instead of that one has to go through the study of vedanta which is having a well defined methodology of teaching and it is not like everything else it is a lifelong pursuit and what you do every day act is more important it is not something like you do some gora tapas for 6 months and then everything is fine and all that it is not like that in fact more than anything else daily even if you spend half an hour one hour that is more important that is the nitya karma in fact even in the in the vaidika culture most importance is given to the nitya karma nitya karma means what whatever you have to do every day as a mumukshu what do you have to do every day means you have to do some shravana manana nidhyasanam every day that until when i have to do means till you don't ask this question you have to do that okay this question will not come to you one day then you don't have to do that so till then you can continue okay so anyway so the point here is those who know the sampradaya those who have learned the upanishad and also they have understood the vision of the upanishad tad artha vidaha what do they say pravadanti they say what how do they talk about this atma they say this atma is samasta jagat prakritim 
here prakriti is the is the cause it is the cause of this entire world this atma is the cause of the entire world in fact bhagwan also uses similarly his his uh, the the pronoun i with reference to saying when he talks about in the in the bhagavad gita he says that mayadhyakshena prakriti hi suyate sacharacharam so this this prakriti is only uh, he is working and is creating everything because of my adhyaksha means in my supervision okay in my oversight all that okay so brahman is the jagat karanam brahma that is how the tatastha lakshanam of brahman is given even in the brahma sutra janmadhyasya yataha is the sutra action so that is based on the saitriya upanishad vakya correct yat ova ima nibhuta nijayante ye na jata nijivanti yat prayant abhisambishanti so this entire world is is caused by which cause there is only one cause which is satyam jnanam anantam since it is jnanam there is no other jnanam other than yourself understand that there is no other conscious being which you can perceive there is only one conscious being which is self revealing self existence reality which is yourself so you are the samasta jagat prakritim you are the cause of the entire world jagat itself is an interesting word jayate gachati iti jagat we say it is born it is gone that means all everything is transient correct this this whole world of names and forms which is transient its cause is yourself in fact it is the paramatma padam it is not just individual atma it is not some puny individual self i am individual i am limited i am a mortal no it is the paramatma okay or i think in, in sometimes in english they translate it they say supreme self and all that okay you can say that nothing wrong supreme self paramatma or ultimate self you can give different words for that but it is the self which is talked about as the jagat karanam by the shastra that self is not separate from yourself in fact it is the paramatma padam and it is rishi matra vapuhu and its its body or its very nature is what rishi matram means it is consciousness alone it is pragnana ghana it is one homogeneous consciousness partless whole okay so consciousness again is not a quality of the self it is consciousness itself understand that drishi matra vapuhu and is dhruvam means nityam satyam mean it is the only thing which always exists it's the invariable unchanging reality it's not subjected to space time that is dhruvam ekam it is one and only neha nanasti kinchana like that the shastra also is revealing it there is no nanatvam there is no manyness in this in fact it is one homogeneous whole within it also there are no divisions ekam eva advitiyam is one only one and without a second so it does not in technically speaking we will say we say that it doesn't have sajatiya vijatiya swagata bheda means there are no other atma in the category of atma itself okay there are no two atmas so it is eka means sajatiya bheda is not there vijatiya bheda means what if I, if i say one cow there is one horse also can be there correct that also is not there with reference to atma all anatma or mithya they are all vitatha so it's not there is nothing else even vijatiya other species other categories also there are nothing only atma alone is there so ekam eva only atma advitiyam means what it doesn't have any divisions within itself also it doesn't have parts it's not like one tree then you say there is a trunk there is a branch there is a leaf flower all that no 
So, Sajatiya, Vijatiya, Swagata, Bheda, Rahitaha. That is the Ekam we talk about here. One. One. Only one without a second. That's what is this Atma. Ataha. Therefore, what? Anyat Anityam Iti. Anything other than the Atma. Atma alone is Satyam. Everything other than the Atma. They are all only appearances in Atma. And the appearances are not of the same order of reality. They are all false. They are all transient. They do not, in fact, touch the Atma in any manner. They cannot touch it. So that is the reality. That is, I am not saying this. This is said by the Upanishads and those who know the meaning of the Upanishads. That's what Acharya is pointing out. So now from all these things, finally what he is now again summarizing okay, the whole point which he was making. What is that? Ataeva nakim sidudaharanam dhruvamasti parasya vinashi gunam yataeva matasthita mukta madho nahi nitya manitya gune na guni. So, ataha, therefore, what? Not only that you are not able to give anything, any analogy, etc., Suti also is not supporting you. Okay. Therefore, na kinchi dudaharanam dhruva masti. First thing is what you say that nitya vastu is having anitya guna, but you are not able to give any valid valid example for that. Okay, there is nothing. That parasya vinashi gunam, that para, para atma has vinashi gunam means what the qualities which are themselves destructive. Okay. So, the indestructible Atma is having destructible qualities like this. For this, to establish that you cannot give any other uh, examples, nor you can give any Shruti Pramana for them. Okay. So, because this is like this, in this manner, Yata Evam Ataha, therefore what? Stita Muktam Ataha, therefore whatever I have said this, whatever I have been saying now, is all now well established. That what what is well established? Nahi nityam anitya gunena guni. So the nitya vastu cannot become a guni, the one which has a guna. Okay. That do what kind of gunas? Anitya gunena in, in the form of gunas which are anitya. So because of gunas having gunas which are anitya. The nitya vastu cannot become a guni in that in that fashion. Nahi na na asti. So the nityam, whatever is nitya, whatever is eternal, cannot have any qualities which are transient or which are anitya. This is well established. Okay. And what is the other thing which is very important and well established? That also we'll see here. Upalabhya mahankaranam bhavitum shamate drishi rupa guno nayataha vishaya kriti ranjita dhi gunavate vishayatva mahankaranasya tataha. Okay, so we were talking about the uh, gunas, but what about I thought? I also is there, correct? Ahankara. Now, ahankara also for him, it is upalabhyam only. Upalabhyam means that which is available for cognition, that which becomes evident to you. Upalabhyam, drishyam, you can say, that which is seen, known, cognized. Ahankaranam bhavitum kshamate drishirupa gunahanayata. So, okay, everything else is not a guna of this atma, but what about ahankara? Ahankara is in the form of I only, correct? So at least that should be a guna. If you say like that, even that is not a guna. That is what now Acharya is pointing out here. Because even that is Drishyam Upalabhyam. Okay? So Ahankaranam Drishirupa Gunaha Na Bhavitum Shamate. So it cannot be the guna of this Drishi Rupa, which is pure consciousness. 
the ahankara also cannot be a guna of this pure consciousness because that is also cognized that is also drishya so it, it is not uh, proper for it to be a quality of this drishi rupa atma the conscious being the conscious self okay yataha because why vishaya kritihi anjita dhi gunavate so the vishaya kriti means what the manovritti the, the mind which takes the form of a vishaya that we say is what it is anjita guna means the, the mind uh, which is uh, which is having this you can say anjitam means basically like a ointment and all if you stick on if you put an ointment on yourself it is sticking on you correct anjanam is an ointment actually so anjita means basically the vishaya kriti the manovritti is there in the mind and that is considered as a dhi guna only it is a quality of the mind to have manovrittis therefore dhi guna vat ahankaranasya vishayatvam is there the ahankara also is nothing but the quality of the mind it is not the quality of atma it cannot be atma guna because for the atma it is a drishi rupa sir it is a drishya atma is the drishi rupa and ahankara is the drishya so like any other drishya even the any other manovritti of different vishayas different objects the ahankara also falls under the same category and it is also a quality of one's mind alone therefore ahankara also is not the quality of atma consciousness it is pure consciousness alone to which everything becomes evident to which everything is an object of cognition only okay so now continuing what vishaya prakritim pratipannavati mati vritti mahankaranam cha matehe udhayam paripashyati yo vikritah paramatma sadu so now this is the finally acharya is now telling the mahavakya itself so the individual self is not having any guna it is nirguna it is pure consciousness alone it is not connected to any object and it is also it also does not have the ahankara as the guna so that point in the first part of the verse he is again saying vishaya prakritim pratipannavatim mati vrittim ahankaranam cha matehe so the vishaya prakriti means here again the uh, the uh, the manovritti only with reference to the vish- vishayas with re- reference to the uh, to the objects and those manovrittis ahankara ahankara also is a manovritti vishaya prakriti means the vishaya akara vrittis are also manovrittis all of them are are known they are all available pratipannavati for the atma they are all pratipannavati means they are all known by the atma they are all drishya to the atma and therefore what cha matehe means they all belong to the mind only they are all qualities of the mind because this avikritah atma ubhayam paripashyati it sees both the vishayas and the ahankara it is all evident to the unchanging invariable atma so atma is the invariable in each and every cognition the tragedy is that we miss that because we are so focused on knowing each and every object in every cognition and in fact we are making judgment also based on that on ourselves whether i am a knowledgeable person i am stupid person etc so our focus is always on knowing the objects which are becoming evident to us but in that what is hidden the greatest secret is what the hidden thing is that yourself is the invariable in each and every cognition as a conscious being and the implication of that is what if you are the invariable unchanging reality in each and every cognition you are satyam 
you are the only truly existing reality whatever comes and goes all the cognitions all the cognitions themselves are dependent on states of mind they are all modifications of mind and being modifications of mind they are transient and they are all not of the same order of reality they are all only mithya so the satyam mithya you have to understand always if you are able to see the satyam mithya in each and every cognition then you have attained a certain understanding of your own reality so you are this unchanging reality who is seeing both the ahankara vritti and the vishayakara vritti both these vrittis are seen by you only it becomes evident to you only as the conscious being and you are the unchanging reality in that and that unchanging reality is the paramatma paramatma saduktihi aso purushaha that purusha who is the conscious being in the individual even though you may call it jeevatma individual self and all that that individual self is non different identical with the paramatma what we call as paramatma or the jagat karanam and what is called as sad in the chandogya upanishad sadeva somya idam agre asi ekameva advitiyam sadeva satyam also it says the upanishad later on the sad vastu alone is satyam and that satya sad vastu is none other than yourself so this this is the mahavakya this is the equation the individual self is non different identical with the cosmic self we can say if you want okay that which is the cause of the entire universe or the universal self cosmic self because there is only one conscious being and all these differences like individual self cosmic self are all only upadhikrita we have to understand it is all a standpoint if you look at from the standpoint of the world then we talk about a cosmic self if we look at it from the standpoint of a particular body mind sense complex it is the individual self but there is no difference between the self one self and another self and all that there is only one self really and that is paramatma that is sadvastu so this is said uktihi it is there in the upanishad also this is the teaching this is the mahavakya you have to understand this now i told you that this is a guru shishya samvada correct guru and shishya are talking in fact if you remember the original story if you go back to the third or fourth verse here shishya went to the guru and said his own understanding about the world and asked the guru to teach correct that is how this whole thing started now the shishya is coming back into the picture okay once the mahavakya has been revealed to the shishya now what does the shishya say he says like any other student only how can i be this <laughs> i the puny individual limited being how can i be this paramatma who is the jagat karanam i am alpajnah alpa shakti man in every way i look at myself i am alpa i am small paramatma is all all knowing all powerful where is all where is small there is no uh, there is no way i can be this all knowing paramatma who is says nanu deha bridesha katham bhavata abihita paramatma sadukti riti na viruddham avadisham etadaham shruti rapyamum artham vachayatah so first line is the shishya shishi shishya is saying nanu deha brid yeshah yeshah deha brid कथम भवता अभिहिता परमात्म सदुक्ति इति सो दिस देह ब्रत वन हु इज ऑक्युपाइंग और वन हु इज सपोर्टिंग दिस बॉडी माइंड सेंस कॉम्प्लेक्स ओके और वन हु इज हुस अबोर्ड इज दिस बॉडी माइंड सेंस कॉम्प्लेक्स राइट वन हु इज इन डवेलिंग इन दिस बॉडी माइंड सेंस कॉम्प्लेक्स द देह ब्रत 
this deha brit yeshaha deha brit katham how bhavata abhita by you this deha brit was is revealed or said to be what paramatma sate iti as paramatma sat paramatma and sat vastu how can you say this deha brit okay because the paramatma is as i told you all knowing all powerful but this this jeevatma this individual self is small mortal being how can you equate the both in fact any equation should have an apparent difference correct otherwise you don't require equation nobody gives an equation one equal to one or a equal to a that's not an equation correct at least you have to say 3 minus 2 equal to 4 minus 3 so 3 minus 2 looks different 4 minus 3 looks different or you say a plus b whole square equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab something like that you can give an equation there has to be an apparent difference and you have to arrive at the identity then only the equation makes sense correct but sometimes what most in fact in this case it is very difficult for you to arrive at the identity just like that arriving at the identity is the whole journey in fact of a mumukshu of a jignas so that is the journey of the vedantic student you have to arrive at the identity and how do i arrive at the identity you have to undergo teaching and you have to live with the guru also mostly because it is about self transformation so anyway the question is coming here how can i be that because i am not able to see the identity that easily then what does the guru say guru says na viruddham avadisham etad aham so whatever this i have told you till now i have not said anything contradictory okay, anything wrong na viruddham it is not viruddha it is not against anything you think that it is against pratyaksha correct or your own experience so you are your pratyaksha anumana etc uh, you think that it goes against whatever teaching i have given the mahavakya goes against the pratyaksha and anuman but in fact what we actually establish is that it is not even against pratyaksha anumana understand that because the important thing is even though we talk about all knowing small knowing etc this all knowing small knowing all these things are all only qualities correct they are all dharma but you have to give up the viruddha dharma to arrive at the identity we don't say that ishvara as ishvara jiva as jiva is identical no understand that it's not that vedantins are uh, mad or anything <laughs> uh, that they don't accept the division between an individual and the total the at the guna level at the dharma level there is difference that is what is revealed by pratyaksha also your own experiences sense perception etc also reveals that we do not deny it in fact that is why we give the example of soyam devadatta ha the mahavakya is like soyam devadatta what is this soyam devadatta this is that devadatta i say see i go to a reunion my college reunion in fact after 25 years i in fact i used to have a bigger beard and all that but now so I assume that i go with a big beard and, and white beard etc somebody has seen me in college much less weight also okay only 68 kg 70 kg now i am 85 kg that 85 is even better i was 100 kg and all that at one point one point in time so let us say i am 95 kg now big paunch etc big beard white hair then nobody is recognizing me okay but one guy knows me already so he tells the other guy this is that devadatta okay now the qualities of this devadatta and qualities of that devadatta are different correct that devadatta was only 68 kg had black hair 
Now this Devadatta is 95 kgs, having white hair, etc. Old, looks older, as a specs. So when we, but still in usage it is there, correct? This is that Devadatta when you say, it is not that we do not know the differences in the dharmas. That the Devadatta qualified by that place and time is different from this Devadatta who is qualified by this place and time. That is only the dharma. The qualities are different. But the dharmi is the same. That is the thing. The unchanging reality is the dharmi, correct? The one who has the qualities is the same person. The identity is there only. We are not talking about the identity based on the dharma. The pratiksha and anumana pramanas are only showing you the dharma. But Vedanta is talking about the identity of the dharmi. Understand that. The dharmi is the same. Whether you say individual self, cosmic self, universal self, supreme self, whatever self, all self are only self. Understand that first. There is no difference there. It's identical. All the dharmas are only kalpita. They are transient in fact. Therefore, the identity is arrived at by, by giving up the viruddha dharma and seeing the essential oneness in one's own nature. Correct? The identity is there only as a dharmi. That is what is there. Therefore, I have not said anything contradictory. Acharya is saying, na viruddham avadisham ketadaham. And not only me, don't think that I have said this because the topic, the, the title of this text itself is Shruti Sara Samudharanam. Right? It is all only whatever is there in the Shruti only I am saying. He says, he says Shruti hi api amu martham uvacha yataha because the Shruti also has said the same thing. Whatever the teaching I have given you is not different from what the Shruti is saying and Shruti is not also contradicting Pratyaksha and Arumana because the Shruti is arriving at the identity based on the Dharmi. Okay, the nature of the Dharmi is one and the same. Even with reference to space and all we can understand, correct? Therefore, how what are all the Shruti Vakyas, you ask? Okay. Now Acharya is quoting that also in very, very uh, in a pithy manner, very brief. Each word points to one Shruti Vakya here. Okay. So this is very interesting. This verse I really loved it. So Amatam Namater Amatastadidam Yadamutra Tadeva to Kaschiditi Shruti Shuprati Padita Masya Drishe Paramatma Padat. So here the first line, see this amatam. This amatam is one word, correct? This is coming in the Bradarnik Upanishad. Okay. In fact, recently we did all these things. We are we have just completed this part. Amatam mantra, avignatam, vignatre. Like this, there is a, a there is a Brahmana. Tadva eta daksharam gargi. There is a akshara brahma brahmana. Akshara brahmana it is called in Bradarnik Upanishad, third chapter. So the gargi and Yajna Vilkya are having samvada. He says that. What does he say? Adrishtam drashtre, ashrutam shrotre, amatam mantre, avijnatam vijnatre, nyanya dataha asti drashta. Nanya dataha asti shrotre, nanya dataha asti mantre, nanya dataha asti vijnatre. Like this, here Yajna Valkya is talking about this Brahman as all these things. Amatam, amatam mantre. It is, means what? It cannot be thought about, but it is the thinker. So it is not an object of any thought. It is not an object of any cognition. But because of which only thoughts are happening, because of which only you cognize anything, because of which only you know something, you see something, you hear something, you taste something, all these things, correct? It itself cannot be tasted, it cannot be heard, because it's not an object of hearing, object of sight, object of smell, 
it is not an object of any of these sense perception but all sense perception is happening because of which that is the brahman we are talking about amatam okay that is the first one then namatehe so that is the next one what namatehe mantaram manvithaha there is a ushast ushasta was questioning yagne valika in the third chapter before okay ushasti brahmanam it is called in that also yajna valkya is saying na matehe mantaram manvitha in fact that is very interesting this ushasta gets very <laughs> he is asking a question and then yajna valkya answers about this atma because he says yes sakshat aparokshat brahma so you now tell me what is this sakshat aparokshat brahma he says then yajna valkya says it is not different from yourself your self is the sakshat aparokshat brahma like that he says no but he says no no don't just give me something like this you have to teach me what is this atma like even a cow or a horse and all you are able to show correct like that you have to show me what is this atma he says that <laughs> then yagna valkya says this he says hey come on you cannot see this na drashte drishte he drashtaram pashye he like that he starts because he has katamaha yagna valkya sarvantaraha see your atma is the sarvantara atma and that is sakshat aparokshat brahma like that yagna valkya says then he becomes he he is confused and he asks how can my atma be the atma of every everybody every being everywhere means what and show me that means he says न दृष्टे दृष्टारम पश्ये न श्रुते श्रोतारम श्रृणुया न मते मंतारम मनवीता न विज्ञात विज्ञाते विज्ञातारम विजानीयाशता आत्मा सर्वांतर अतः अन्यदार्थ लाइक दिस इज अ वेरी वेरी फेमस वाक्य ओके दट इज द न मते मतारम मनवीता सो यू कैनॉट नो as an object of your mind what the one who is the matehe mantara means what one who even knows what is happening in your mind correct for whom your mind itself is an object of cognition that atma cannot be known through your mind as an object so that is what again it is said here then what amataha so that is the next word then what is that amataha then uh, then we also have other words here correct this one by one each word is pointing to one vakya this amataha also is basically from uh, this bradarneka upanishad only okay ashrutaha in fact similar it is all adrishtaha drashta ashrutaha shrota amataha manta meaning also is similar so this also comes in another brahmana it's all in the third chapter of bradarnika one so the first three words point to three vakyas in bradarnika third chapter amatam namate he amataha these three are pointing to these vakyas in the bradarnika then tat tat is pointing to the sixth chapter of chandogya tattvamasi okay so the tattvamasi mahavakya then idam idam is also pointing out to another mahavakya idam sarvam yad ayam atma that is the maitreyi brahmana in bradarneka idam sarvam yad ayam atma all that is here is nothing but this self ajna valkya is teaching his wife maitreyi there that is the maitreyi brahmana very interesting and then acharya is going to another kataka shruti what is that yada mutra so the yada mutra is there yadeva iha tada mutra yada mutra tadanviha mrityoho sa mrityum aapnoti yaiha nana iva pashyati very very highly quoted by bhashyakara also in all the places so whatever is there iha here in this world only is there amutra also means there 
and whatever is there only is here, which is all Brahman only. Everything is Brahman. Okay. And in fact, the one who sees many things here, ya iha nana iva as though there is many things, what happens to him? Mrityo ho sa mrityu maapnoti. He goes from death to death. Okay, because if you see many things here, you also become one of the things in this many things. And obviously, you become a limited being. And if you are a limited mortal, then you have to die. You have to take up another body. So, you will keep on going like this. So, this is the Kataka Shruti. Then, Tadeva, this again, this points to the Keno Upanishad. But very, my very favorite Upanishad. So, yet vacha anabhyuditam yena vag abhyudyate tadeva brahmatvam vidhi neda midhidam upasate yet shrotra na shrnoti yena shrotra midam shrutam tadeva brahmatvam vidhi neda midhidam upasate yen manasana manute yena hur mano matam tadeva brahmatvam vidhi neda midhidam upasate this tadeva that alone is this brahman not whatever you anything you can think of is not brahman understand that Right? Because it's not an object, it cannot be an object of your thought. So that is why even if somebody says, I saw Brahman, I saw Bhagavan with all this, or whatever you can say, okay. Shankam Chakram. Bhagavan is in Golok Vrindavan. Vaikunta, Kailasha. These are, those are all, okay, the vision of the Bhakta. But... <laughs> If you also make Bhagavan into an object of your knowledge, <laughs> means you have made Bhagavan into Anatma. <laughs> Bhagavan has become Anatma and also Alpa because Bhagavan has become an object of your cognition. Bhagavan becomes limited by that, in fact. So that is all a problem. So that cannot be Brahman. What is Brahman? Yen manasana manute, yenahur mano matam, that which cannot be an object of your mind, but by which mind itself is knowing, because of which mind is mind, because of which ears are ear, eyes are eyes, nose is a nose, correct? That is Brahman, which can never be objectified by words or by mind. That alone is Brahman, not what you see or what you do, visualize, etc. So, this is uh, Keno Upanishad. Tadeva to Taschit. <laughs> this also again Kato, Kato Upanishad. Okay. The Kaschit. Another very, very interesting. So, Kaschit Dhiraha Pratyagatmana Maikshati. So, that is the Kato Upanishad. In fact, Paranchikani Vyatrinat Swayam Bhu Parang Pashyati Nantara Atman. That's how it starts. So, everybody has a tendency to go after external objects only, correct? That is how you are made. That is your natural tendencies. In fact, by making you like that, Bhagavan has actually killed you, it seems. Vyatrinat Swayam Bhu Swayam Bhu here is Bhagavan. So, Paranchikani means, the Paranchi means outward. Khani means the, the uh, Indriyas. So by making your Indriyas going outward, you are always you are focusing on external objects. That is your natural tendency. But then to know the truth about yourself, you have to withdraw and focus on yourself. You have to try to understand what is your true nature. That is why Kaschit Dheeraha, only few people Dhiraha here means Viveki, one who has the discrimination of what is Atma, what is Anatma, what is Nitya, what is Anitya. That Dhiraha, Viveki Purushaha, one who has discriminatory knowledge, Pratyagatmana Maikshati, the they, they alone see this Pratyagatma. Avritta Chakshur means what they have turned their eyes within it seems. And also what Amritattva Mitchan, desiring Amritattva, desiring immortality, the one who turns towards oneself means one who makes effort to know one's own nature. 
that person with discriminatory knowledge alone sees this reality, not everybody else. Like this, it is Sutishu Pratipaditam Asya Drishehe Paramatma Padatvam. So in the Shruti itself, it is Brishu. Brisham means uh, uh, many times, repeatedly, frequently. So the Shruti is, is showing you this, this equation, this identity between the Paramatma Padam, the Paramatma and the, the conscious being, who you call as Jivatma or individual conscious being. They are all one and the same. They are identical. There is no difference. And it has been shown by many, many Shrutis repeatedly. Like this, the, our Acharya is pointing out. Of course, we can give more Shrutis also to you. I can give. So, but if you read different Upanishads, you will come, uh, you will become familiar with all these Vakyas. So that is what, this is taught by the Shruti itself. And therefore, whatever I am saying, this Mahavakya is not contradictory. It is not something wrong. In fact, that is the truth. That is the reality. That's what you have to hold on. Okay. The rest of the things we'll see next week. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamadachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Kyo Namaha Hari Om Danyavada Guruji Danyavada Danyavada